Well, 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 look what the cat drug in. Looks like a fish to fry to me. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 501 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. AI is the name of the game this week. My special guest is Wei Li, VP and GM of Artificial Intelligence and Analytics at Intel. Wei and I dig into the details of Intel's new open source AI reference kits. We discuss the motivation to create these open source kits, why community involvement is crucial to Intel's AI Everywhere campaign, and how you can get started using these kits today. Also this week, I investigate the first AI pilot developed by a team of researchers from the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. So without further ado, let's welcome Wei Li to Fish Fry. Hi, Wei. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amila. Uh, very glad to be here. Excellent. Okay, so first off, tell me a little bit about your role at Intel and some background about AI everywhere. Yeah, so my official role is the GM of AI and analytics at Intel, also known as AIA. So that's a fun name we've been playing with. I got to work with a team of magicians, and I call them magicians because they actually have very high natural intelligence versus the artificial intelligence well, we are working on. So at Intel, our vision is AI everywhere. And we believe this is a great opportunity for us to improve the life of every person on the planet with AI. Excellent. Now, tell me about Intel's new AI reference kits. What's the goal of these new kits? The goal of these new reference kits, they are really one of the steps we are making towards AI everywhere. And the goal of AI is actually pretty simple. If I want to talk to a lot of customers, talk to enterprises and businesses, what they want to do is very simple. They want to go from data to insights quickly. And many of enterprises already have a lot of data. And the data, as you know, has been increasing at the exponential rate. And we have seen many AI applications already in uh, many different industries. For example, from healthcare, financial services to you know something we love, maybe uh, entertainment. However, according to a recent study, 87% of AI ideas never make it to deployment. So that's a really a big gap. So what we want to do here is AI software will be the bridge from data to insights. The new reference kits are just one example of these AI software we're trying to build to facilitate AI everywhere. So following on that way, what made Intel decide to develop and open source these projects? And who is the target user here? Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to target as broad of audience as possible. So, so there will be a broad set of developers and the data scientists. So that means people will have various different levels of AI expertise and experiences. So we are not going to require somebody who has to have a PhD in AI and who's been doing AI research for many years in order to apply AI. What we want to go broad is, is I want to get to a place where anyone with any reasonable experience can actually apply AI here. So there's different levels of expertise here. And so that's why when we design the AI reference kits, we want to target these different levels. So for example, if you're an enterprise, you're just new to AI. You haven't done anything. You don't have anyone who, who knows anything about AI. You don't have even anyone who has you know, even database experiences. We can actually take these reference kits as a starting point to get you there. Now, if you already have people who have access to data, have done some AI work already, or maybe only the classical machine learning. Then you want to learn something about the latest, greatest deep learning. You can start from these uh, reference kits also. So there's various degrees you can adopt the AI reference kits. And even if you already have 
worked on deep learning and you just happen to use whatever software you happen to have, you can actually use Intel's optimized software. We optimize a lot for a lot of AI frameworks and the libraries, and you can easily adopt these optimized one API products to improve the performance of the AI solutions you may already have. So we're really targeting various different degrees of expertise and all kinds of uh, scenarios people may have here. So we really want to go broad here. And uh, so that's the main target of these uh, toolkits here. So Wei, what differentiates these reference kits from other AI solutions on the market? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I always get asked about that because AI is a very dynamic and active uh, area today. A lot of people working on AI. So what makes this different? I would say we're looking at maybe three to four different unique differences here. One is we are looking at the specific use cases for different industries. For example, if you're only interested in chatbot, we actually have a chatbot reference kit for you. So we are very specific to these uh, use cases. And the second is I alluded to a little bit earlier also, we've been working on performance for a long time. As you know, AI demands performance because you have a lot of data. You have to have high performance in order to get the AI work done here. So a big part of what we do here in the reference case is we incorporate the optimized Intel software underneath these uh, reference solutions. So that makes a huge difference for people to get work done more easily and get the solutions more quickly, as well as getting the solutions faster. For example, in the chatbot, you can reduce the amount of response time with the customers here. Now, the third thing I would say is we have a pretty wide coverage because quite often uh, the solutions out there tend to focus on using one technique or the other. For example, they may only use machine learning or they may only focus on deep learning. So for us, we actually cover all the way from data analytics, if that's what you care about, to machine learning, if that's what you care about, all the way to deep learning, if that's what you want to do. So we have a very wide coverage in terms of different AI techniques in these reference kit. Now, the last one, not the least one, which is open source. You, you mentioned open source earlier also. We are very big on open source. We believe in the open ecosystem and uh, there's no boundary. We're not creating a jail for people to stay in the jail, right? So we have open source where people can download these reference kits as well as they can make contributions to these reference kits also. So really we want to work with the community to work on AI together, to advance AI together so we can get to uh, AI everywhere. Because Intel, even though we have a we're a big company, we have large scale. We believe we're well positioned to contribute and lead in the effort to AI everywhere. We're still, we can't do it alone. We have to collaborate with others to make this thing happen here. That makes sense. Now, Wei, Intel is traditionally a hardware company, but is now highly focused on software. So how do these new AI reference kits fit within Intel's software strategy and vision for AI? Yes. So Intel is, is a well-known company for hardware. Now, when people interact with our hardware, they actually interact with software first. And I don't know how many data scientists and developers will have to learn, for example, the new mix of instruction inside our hardware. And the hope is zero. Nobody needs to know the ISA hardware specific features. And so software is what people are interacting with. And the reference kits are really part of the, our bigger Intel software strategy here. And if we look at hardware side, we are making progress on a variety of hardware for AI, all the way from CPU, GPU to special purpose accelerators. But at the end of the day, software is the unifying interface to the developers and the data scientists. And that's why Intel initiated this thing called the uh, One API. So all these uh, software we're talking about, they're part of the One API products. And the One API's goal is to provide a consistent interface across many variety of hardware solutions here. So it is gonna be the foundation for AI. So our software effort is actually very big at Intel and the reference kits are just the one example of the software first effort we have uh, at Intel here. 
Fantastic. Well, Wei, I think it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, you get the standard off-the-cuff. So a lot of us can't have our favorite foods these days for one reason or another. Either the restaurant's closed, it's in another country, you need a passport to get there. So Wei, if you could have one meal right now, what would it be? Uh, uh, hopefully, I have uh, many more meals left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so I, we're lucky we live not that far away from our downtown here. And there's a Pakistani Indian restaurant called, uh, I don't know if I should mention names. Oh, no, it's called, it's called, maybe I'm giving a free commercial here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's called Zarin's, and uh, it's, a very, it's a very nice place. We can just walk over there. And usually, the only thing is, usually there's a long line, so I have to find the right time to get there. <laughs> I love it. Well, Wei, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, thank you. Have you listened to my 500th episode yet? I was super happy to have David Mayman from Mayman Aerospace on my show for this momentous occasion. And if you haven't checked it out yet, you can click the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com, or you can also just head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. So with a perfect melding of last week and this week, did you hear about the first AI pilot developed at Carnegie Mellon University? So get this, a team of researchers have developed an AI pilot that uses a computer vision system, along with six cameras, to detect nearby aircraft. It also utilizes an automatic speech recognition system that helps it understand incoming radio messages and also helps it communicate with air traffic controllers and other pilots. And they trained this AI on data that included air traffic patterns, images of aircraft, and radio transmissions collected at the Pittsburgh Regional Airport and the Allegheny County Airport. So this AI pilot has not yet been used in an actual aircraft, but it did perform quite well on flight simulators. In their test runs, this team from Carnegie Mellon University used two different flight simulators, one controlled by a human and one controlled by the AI, with both simulators operating in the same airspace. So why do we need AI pilots? Well, our skies are super crowded, and with the advancement of autonomous aircraft, they could get even more crowded. Now, NASA and the FAA have proposed changing the urban airspace by dividing it into corridors or lanes that would restrict what kind, how many, and when certain aircraft can use them. As you can undoubtedly imagine, this would be a big leap from what is in practice now, and it could potentially cause traffic jams in the skies, where critical aircraft could not reach their destination due to these restrictions. So how could this AI help? Well, first, let's talk about autopilot. So autopilot controls are very common in aircraft flying in high altitudes under IFR, or instrument flight rules. But IFR isn't where the airspace is the most crowded. In the lower altitude airspace, where aircraft are controlled by pilots and visual flight rules, or VFR, are in place, AI could be used to help deal with airspace overcrowding. And this AI pilot designed by Carnegie Mellon was designed to seamlessly interact with aircraft in this VFR airspace. Sebastian Shearer, an associate research professor in the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute and a member of the team that developed this AI pilot, says this about this revolutionary technology. He says, this is the first AI pilot that works in the current airspace. I don't see that airspace changing for UAVs. The UAVs will have to change for the airspace. Wow, 
So if you want even more information about this new AI pilot, I've included a link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description of the YouTube video of this episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing... Sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel I mentioned earlier, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and a very special selection of our Fish Fry podcasts as well. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel, too. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of September 30th, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>